Welcome back, guys, to the most revolutionary podcast on YouTube. Now, guys, today's episode is going to be about staying in your lane. Now, obviously, when you're tra- <laughs> obviously when you're driving a car, you want to stay in your lane, right? We get that, but. It's the same thing for life. Now, before I get to all that, let me backtrack a little bit. As a young kid, I was mischievous. And even as an early teen, I, for whatever reason, I, I, what I think it is, and I'm not saying this is always it, but what it was in my case was my situation was so boring around me. It was so mundane. That I want, I liked when things got a little spicy in the sense. I liked when things got interesting in other people's lives or life at school, and so I would I, I enjoyed drama. Now I didn't necessarily start up the drama, but I always liked seeing what was going on around everyone else and seeing what was happening with this person and what was happening between these two people. And I just would not stay in my lane if I. Again, your attention is finite. You only have so much. If you're using that attention on external things that aren't pertaining to you, you're just wasting energy in my opinion. Now, there's uh, that's a generalization. There's things that you can pay attention to outside of yourself and outside of the things that are going on. Like family members and friends, obviously you want to pay attention to what's going on in their lives. But negativity and things that are going around in the world that you can't even solve, why would you focus in on them? It just doesn't make sense to me. It never makes sense to me. If I'm driving, this was me when I was younger. So I was in my lane, right? And I saw someone else in the other lane. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go check that dude's lane out. That looks interesting. And that always led me to problems. Always, there was not a single time it did not lead me to problems. Either the drama got stirred up even more or let's say I helped spread the drama or whatever else. I just create even more drama, whatever I would do. I don't, I don't Honestly, I try and forget a lot of things I did when I was a younger kid because it was just a lot of mischievous, ridiculous, um, just outlandish things. And mainly things that I found comical. I wasn't doing anything that was um, um, that I would say was very evil to other people. Um, and I didn't really, I never really even caused any problems. But again, drama was just interesting to me for whatever reason. And, and again, I think I explained that reason. It's just, it's like, if you're going to feel no emotions, you might as well feel sadness, right? So if you're not going to feel any interest in your life, you might as well feel it from another person's point of view. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I guess I'm just talking out my ass. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> um... But again, focusing on you, focusing on what you're doing, because people's lives are already so complicated and so complex as it is. So putting any effort into other people's, especially enemies, this is the one thing I found, which is even more odd, but I'm sure there's some science behind it. I feel like most people pay attention to people they hate the most they'll pay attention to them the most, which is odd. And I don't know why it is. Maybe because sometimes people hate on other people that are more successful than them. Maybe that's usually what it is. So again, they're looking at that person all the time because they have that success and they just want them to do bad. I, I don't, I don't never, I never understand people who wish problems upon anyone else. Now I'm, there's tons of bad people out there and I, I kind of believe in karma in some sense. But I just never spend any time thinking about anyone else, like thinking, oh, this person, I hope something bad happens to that person or, oh, this person, this is what's going on in their life. Oh, like I'm going to pay attention to it again when, when, when it's friends and family. I pay attention to things going on in their life because I like to uh, be supportive and I like to bring some kind of intelligence from my point of view and see if there's anything that I can do to remedy or better the situation or improve upon the situation. But again, people, they just want to pay attention to outer things. I feel like sometimes your life gets either mundane and boring or sad things are happening or things aren't going your way. 
So you're, you're, you outsource. You outsource to other people. You outsource to other situations. I think the news is terrible. I think every news channel, every news source, every journal or article about anything news related is a waste of time. And I'm glad the journalists make money from doing their thing and the news people make money. But I don't know why people pay attention to it. Now, the local news, I guess there's some importance to maybe watching some local news every once in a while. But even then, I just don't like the news. Maybe I have a bias. I hate the news. I'm going to be real with you guys. I dislike the news so much. I don't, I, again, it's just, it's external stuff. It's stuff that you can't even worry about. Uh, I was reading on Twitter something that I should not be doing, but I fell in the trap. You, if you go on Twitter, there's um, a trending page, and you'll see a list of five to ten things that are trending, and you could check out. There's, It's a bigger list if you expand it, but it's like five to ten that you can see right away. And when I looked at it, I think it was yesterday, or it might have been today, it was the Corona virus and it's the it's the bad virus that's going around in in china and i think it's spread to a couple more places it's, it's like how i don't think it's it's as problematic to the extent that ebola was but i know that it just spreads fast and a couple of people have died from it but it, from the symptoms it just sounds like um a really bad cold slash flu but anyways i look at the trending page and i see that and it creates angst. It, it creates angst. It created, you know, an outer anxiety because I looked at this when I shouldn't have. There's nothing I can do to solve the coronavirus. I'm not smart as those people that, that fix viruses and deal with those things. I'm nowhere. I should not should be nowhere near a hospital doing anything productive because I don't know anything about the medical field except for nutrition and a little bit of lifestyle management. But for the most part, I'm an idiot <laughs> when it comes to that field. And I see this, and again, it just creates problems. I, I focus on it, and now I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh, man, this coronavirus, it, it spreads, gets to me. Hopefully I can fight it off. It takes me out and be not too happy about that. And it's probably not even going to be a big deal. I guarantee that in 10 days, in 10 days less, I feel there will be some kind of vaccine or there will be a way of getting rid of it, and then everyone will calm down. But these things happen. We saw the same thing happen with the missile strikes that were going on and whatever political side you lean towards. I don't even want to talk about that. But again, people were, were a little bit worried about the strikes of Soleimani and then the retaliation from, I think it was Iran. I might be butchering this. I shouldn't be talking about this topic because I'm not knowledgeable about it, but I'm going to do it anyways. Cause again, I'm an idiot. <laughs> don't do as I do. Do as I say. That's what the old saying is, and I'm going to stand by that. And again, I want to reemphasize. I just noticed, I say it and again a lot. I'm sorry if I say uh, like, and again. There's things in my vocabulary that I repeat way too often. And, you know, I'm working the kinks out. I'm working on it. We'll get there, but we're working on it. Back to the topic. Worrying about outer things. What can you do to remedy this? I think that limiting your time on social media is a great start to it. Cutting out the news, another great start. This one's going to, people are going to find this one interesting, but caffeine, if you're consuming heavy amounts of caffeine or if you find yourself naturally highly anxious, I think that caffeine's not good for you. Caffeine raises heart rate, and if you have anxiety, that's also what anxiety does. It raises your heart rate. So sometimes, the effects of caffeine can feel like um, a slight anxiety attack or some slight anxiousness. It's something that I stay away from, not necessarily because I'm anxious, but because I have so much energy and I'm spewing with, with energy as it is. And so if I drink coffee, I just turn into a uh, like an ape with rabies is the best way I'd describe it. <laughs> a destructive ape with rabies. Jesus Christ. Jesus fuck. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know what? It's not the, the podcast going to go on. I literally a tornado can come through this place and I'm still going to stand here and if it wrecks all the lights, we're going to keep going. It's just it's going downhill. But again, guys, you see how I deal with the situation like this? I don't even worry that my mic has now snapped off my table. Who cares about that? I just care about making a quality podcast and that's what I'll do. 
So I hope that you guys found some of this knowledgeable, maybe some of this um, resonates with you a little bit, and hopefully you can take some tips and help help your own life with this, maybe. I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed, though. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.